Hi, I'm Ryan Kelly, an MD-PhD student at the University of Iowa. And I'm Oliver Flutti, a neurosurgery resident at the University of Iowa. We'd like to tell you about an interesting set of experiments coming out in this issue of BRAIN. The title of our paper is Human Prefrontal Septalamic Circuit uh, for Cognitive Control. This work was done in Jeremy Greenlee and Kumar Narayanan's lab at the University of Iowa. I work with Dr. Narayanan, a neurologist whose research maps the brain regions involved in cognitive control. I work with Dr. Greenlee, a neurosurgeon who studies the neural circuitry of speech and language. Dr. Greenlee leads our DBS team. Our neurosurgeons implant stimulating electrodes in the subthalamic nucleus of patients with Parkinson's disease. During the implantation surgery, we are sometimes able to collect experimental data that helps us develop new therapies for Parkinson's disease patients. During the routine surgical procedure, a surgical burr hole is made. A four-contact electrode strip is then placed in the subdural space. As shown here in the image, these four contacts, numbered one through four, overlie the lateral prefrontal cortex highlighted in pink and the primary motor cortex highlighted in purple. After placement of the clinical DBS lead in the subthalamic nucleus, bipolar electrical simulation of the STN is performed and simultaneous ECOG recording from the four-contact subdural electrode strip is acquired. As seen on the right side of the figure, an average evoked potential is then calculated by averaging across multiple stimulation trials. This initially shows a stimulation artifact caused by the electrical stimulus. After a brief electrical artifact, stimulus-induced changes in the local field potential is detected in each of the subdural electrodes. These very early changes occur at 12 milliseconds as shown by the red arrow, suggesting a direct neural connection between the prefrontal cortex and the subthalamic nucleus. Our first set of experiments characterized the anatomical and functional connectivity of the hyperdirect pathway. Next, we wanted to explore the role of the hyperdirect pathway in cognitive control. We study the cognitive symptoms of Parkinson's disease using an interval timing task. Here, an auditory cue instructs PD patients to estimate the duration of a 3 or 12 second interval. Following the cue, patients push a button when they believe a 3 or 12 second interval has fully elapsed. Interval timing tests working memory, attention, cognitive control, and importantly, is simple enough to perform in the operating room. Parkinson's disease patients consistently show disruptions in interval timing performance. Our goal is to determine how a prefrontal subthalamic circuit, the hyperdirect pathway, mediates elementary cognitive processing and how we can use this knowledge to treat the cognitive symptoms of PD. We found sharp increases in low frequency signaling occurred at the start of interval timing trials. This activity originated in medial prefrontal cortex it seemed to center on the 4 Hz frequency band. With STN-DBS in the off or high frequency setting, there was little change in prefrontal low frequency activity around the start of interval timing trials. With DBS set to 4 Hz, there was a significant increase in prefrontal 4 Hz activity. We believe this results from a retrograde activation of the prefrontal cortex via the hyperdirect pathway. 4 Hz DBS also affected how patients judged the passage of time. Patients gave a more accurate estimate of the 12-second interval with 4 Hz DBS. We conclude that 4 Hz STN stimulation can facilitate timing performance in PD patients. I work along with our operative team to place electrodes in the region of STN that's effective for the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. We have to use special electrodes to target this precise, correct region within the nucleus. Our patients are really interested in helping learn about Parkinson's disease and the human brain so that they can help others. During the operation, we can pause for a few minutes and conduct highly limited but unique intraoperative research. All right, Jim, we found a good spot for you here. Okay. So we're going to put the DBS electrode in and then do some test stimulation. And make sure we were able to use these experiments to map connections between the STN and frontal cortex in humans and to record from STN and frontal cortex. We hope that these experiments help understand the circuitry of cognitive control in Parkinson's disease, which could eventually lead to new therapies for cognitive symptoms of Parkinson's disease.